Hi, I'm Shannon Coulter and um, I work in Learning and Leadership Services in the Assessment Division and I'm going to be talking today about uh, program logic models. So uh, basically a program logic model is a visual description uh, of the way a program operates and its um, intended outcomes. In front of you, you should be looking at a document that is a template for a program logic model. And if you uh, take a look at the very top, you will notice a, um, a part that goes into the situation. And what a situation is, it's basically the, um, the problem that your program's trying to remedy. So if I could use an example of an evaluation that I've been a part of in it, it's, um, it has to do with um, skate parks and um, head injuries. And so one of the, um, the situation is, is that there are thousands of kids who are injured in skate parks annually, and the program's intended to help kids become more aware of wearing a helmet to prevent those kinds of injuries. So that would be the situation. Um, under the situation, you'll notice things like assumptions and environmental factors. So the assumptions are the, um, the assumptions that you make about your program that it's going to work. So for example, one assumption that I made in the evaluation of the um, helmet policy was a, that students would respond well to having a role model or a expert um, skateboarder um, present them the information about the awareness of, of wearing helmets. And so that was one assumption that I made that they would respond favorably to an expert. Um, the environmental or external factors that affect the evaluation, those things are things that are typically um, sometimes out of your control that you know that you need in order for the, um, for the program to work. So for example, if the budget were cut um, these things would have uh, dramatic effects on whether the program would be successful. So those are some of the external factors that I might want to uh, take note of. Um, now getting to the, to the heart of the program lo logic model, you'll notice on the far left there is um, the resources. Resources are typically um, the time um, that a program has, the people that a program has, and, um, and the money that it has available to it. So in terms of the logic model that I was using for the helmet safety uh, program, um, there were two people who were um, full-time employees of the organization that ran this program. There was about a $25,000 budget and um, there was uh, the time of those individuals um, amounted to about 40 hours a week. So those were the resources that we had available to make the program work. Now in terms of the second piece is, would be the activities, that's that second column. And the activities are just essentially the things that you do in your program um, to make those outcomes happen. So for example, um, these are things that in education, these are things like the, um, the workshops that you hold, um, it might be the materials that you create. Um, in the helmet safety evaluation, we created materials, um, brochures that made uh, kids aware of the dangers of not wearing a helmet. Um, we created some PSA ads that would air on, um, on local radio stations so that they were aware that of helmet safety. So these are the activities that you do as a part of your program. Then um, that third column, are, are the outputs. And sometimes outputs are confused with outcomes, but outputs are essentially the direct products of your activities. So if, you, um, if your activity was to design a brochure, the output might be that 400 brochures were created. If your activity was to um, hold a workshop or conduct a workshop on um, a, a, training, a training workshop, then the output might be that you trained 400 people. So again, the, um, the outputs are the direct products of your activities. Moving to the, to the right side of the logic model, you'll notice that these are our outcomes. There are short-term, mid-range, and long-term outcomes. Um, these are all very important um, parts of the logic model because these are the things that you expect to occur as a result of your activities. 
So for example, we have short-term outcomes. Short-term outcomes are typically the outcomes that are associated with knowledge change, perceptual changes, attitude changes. Um, these are the first level of changes that typically occur um, after an activity is conducted. So for example, um, we produced some brochures, some literature for students to read in order to make them more aware of helmet safety. And so the outcome for that is of course to increase their awareness. So that was, um, that was an important short-term change that we were looking for. In terms of mid-range outcomes, these are always behavioral changes. These are things that we want people to do. Um, so again, in terms of the helmet safety evaluation, um, we wanted more kids wearing helmets. So our activities that we created um, were to address sort of a plan for having them wear, more, um, wear their helmets more frequently. And that would be the second level of outcome that we would expect. The third level of outcome, those long range outcomes, those impact type outcomes, are um, really the ones that are tied back to my situation. So my situation is, is that we have thousands of um, students having head injuries a year by not wearing helmets in skateboard parks. So my long term outcome is to improve that. Maybe, the, um, maybe it's to reduce it by 50%. But again, my long, my long term or my impact outcome is really to remedy my problem. One of the major um, parts of the program logic model is that the activities that you're doing lead to those outcomes that you've specified. So it's very important that the outcomes that you've created connect back to those activities and that you have a specific way of measuring whether or not those outcomes have occurred. And in terms of that long-term outcome, it's essential that it is remedying the situation that you've, that you've determined at the very beginning of this process. So going back to the helmet um, safety evaluation, we know that um, more than 9,000 kids across the county are injured, um, have head injuries because they're not wearing helmets on skate parks. So my long-term outcome is to reduce or eliminate the head injuries that are occurring um, on skate parks. Okay, so to recap, the purpose of a program logic model is to describe the planned work of a program and its desired um, outcomes. And as you are going through the work of developing your program logic model, there are really three major areas that you have to focus on. One is the situation, which is essentially um, the problem that exists for why your program exists. Um, the second part are, is your planned work, which, is, which includes your, um, your resources, your activities, and your outputs. And finally, your expectations, which include your short-term, your long-term, and your uh, mid-range outcomes. And within those, we have our indicators of success which you'll use to measure um, whether or not your activities are leading to your expectations.